Good afternoon and uh, welcome to my presentation now uh, about team collaboration in augmented reality at Mercedes-Benz. Um, it's an uh, topic from an idea to actually a productive tool. I want to uh, take you with me on the journey how we develop this tool just in short. And uh, I welcome you from Germany. Uh, in the background, you actually see one of our research uh, centers, which is the ARENA 2036. And if you look very close, you might also see some prototypes down here, like a body of actually a S-class. But uh, cars shouldn't be the topic today. It should be about augmented reality. But because before I come to the topic, I want to lose some words about me. And I already introduced the company I work for. I work for this company who actually always puts this star in the front of all of its cars. It's a Mercedes-Benz. And I'm here as a augmented reality specialist. That's how I actually came to the company. And by now I actually got trained as an agile coach. And you will see that actually the topic I will talk today about is actually the combination of both tools and or the both topics actually. And um, by then I also started to do a little PhD study about it because uh, it's, it's so an interesting field of research to think about how this collaboration can actually work in 3D space. And um, yeah, that's actually my topic in the PhD, uh, trying to get together augmented reality and the agile collaboration. Um, within the company, my team is the Mercedes-Benz Van Evolution Center, which is actually the center for visualization at Mercedes-Benz. And it's actually a physical place within the company. So it's here in, in yellow. So you will see um, the, the building just afterwards. But but our idea of the Van Evolution Center is actually to bring together the digital prototype and the physical prototype. And like physically, physically, we are also just in between both. So what you see here is the Van Technology Center, which is um, like the building where all the vans, like the V-Class, the Sprinter, the Vito, and all the other uh, vans are developed. And it starts from the top where there's the management. And just underneath, there's research and development. and from down, actually, there's uh, the prototype body shop. So actually, where all the prototypes are built. And just in between, there is the Van Evolution Center. And we want to bring together both um, worlds a little bit more to bring together the virtual world and the physical world, because, of course, all cars are by now developed in a digital way in um, computer-aided design. But still, every prototype is, or most of the prototypes are done physically, like from physical mock-ups, like you see here, in the arena. And we have different topics um, we cover. So here you again see the actual um, evolution center, which is also a nice building within a building. So this is where the whole team is uh, located. And we have a physical place because we have some physical devices. And when you're familiar with VR, you may know two of them already from back from the past, which is the technology of power walls and the technology of caves. And this, by the way, is actually how virtual reality is used within our company, within our uh, development um, circle forecast for almost 25 years. So we use virtual reality productively for 25 years. And what it looked like maybe 20 years ago is this um, topic with the cave. Uh, you can imagine it, a cave if you don't know it as a cinema which has kind of five walls so you have a wall to the right to the left to the bottom to the top and to the front and they are covered with 3d um, uh, beamers just you know it from the uh, uh, 3d cinema next door uh, so you also got some 3d goggles you know from the cinema they are tracked and you can walk into this cube and then you can look around just you can do with vr goggles now but also almost 25 years ago a topic also located at the VEC is the power wall, which is just a high definition cinema you can imagine. So we're powering up uh, a wall with actually six uh, beamers and get a high definition um, rendering of, for example, cars. And this is still one of our main topics to actually do high end renderings for the development phase of cars. So when maybe the design is in an end phase, Actually, we use um, visualization to show engineers and also the management the visualization of the upcoming cars. But of course, as the technology involves, uh, HMD's head mounted device uh, came to the market and also to, to our um, company. And that's also like a big 
um, topic at the moment, uh, getting all the things we do within our physical um, locations, like in the cave, in the power wall, also to the head mounted displays, uh, like VR goggles and augmented reality goggles. I brought with me some small use cases so you just can see what we're actually doing here uh, within our um, Van Evolution Center. Like a topic for the cave already is ergonomic tests. Um, you can see on the picture on the left, we actually got a seat. So this is um, an, an, a reproduction of the wheel seat like it is, for example, in the V-Class. And you can sit on this um, chair or like this um, location and you get visualized as you were sitting in the actual car and you can do ergonomic tests if you can reach uh, toggles or like here an example, you can actually see shadows you produce with your hands. So like from the um, seating lighting, you can actually put your uh, hand into this area and then the shadow gets visualized and you can actually see if the lighting has to be optimized or something. For the VR goggles, it's mainly fitting tests and service tests. Um, you might also know them from, from other um, car companies. We do actually um, investigating investigations if we can actually um, service an item, like can we get out um, uh, like different um, parts of the car when the car is just in front of us? Do we collide with other objects? This is actually something we really do quite a lot already with VR goggles. The technology of augmented reality yeah, mainly in the last three, four years, of course, developed itself also. So um, we are using, for example, the HoloLens um, for product presentations. Like here's some, some presentation we did uh, actually the two years ago on the EAA here in Germany, which is the F-Cell, so um, a fuel-driven um, uh, uh, sprinter. And uh, you could, on the fair, actually get a HoloLens on yourself, walk around the car and get visualized where actually all the components is, are, where is the um, hydrogen engine, where are the tanks, and you could work yourself through the exhibition there. And solution we are actually using within the development is um, a system with a measuring arm and a camera. You can see it on the bottom. And um, we are using actually this uh, technology here because we had get a, a, a quite a huge um, accuracy here. Because of the measuring arm, we can um, place objects, virtual objects on physical places, like you can see here on a, on a basic body from a car. And on the right, we actually place physical uh, virtual objects there. We can do this within millimeters. And this is actually quite important, of course, for the development phase because you want to really visualize the gaps or like um, collisions within such a use case. And that's why we still rely on such a measuring arm there. But of course, our way of developing cars has changed quite a lot. And um, if you imagine like the big founder like Daimler and um, who actually actually got to his drawing board and draw some, some, some skits uh, there and tried to develop a car on his own, that's not how we actually develop cars by now. It's of course a lot with collaboration, communication within um, the developing of just the part are many people involved. There is a lot of collaboration, a lot of communication going on and you have to connect these people. And that's actually a topic that really is driving the Van Evolution Center at the moment quite a lot. We really try to bring the collaboration to, to all of our use cases because we really see that this is going to shape. And we saw this even before the Corona pandemic, um, our actual idea was to collect, uh, co connect people that are naturally distributed around the world. Of course, we have some, some development um, people in Germany, in Stuttgart here at the main plant. But of course, we also get guys over in, in, in America. We get uh, teams over in Spain and uh, they are in front of their computers. They are in front of their own space. But actually what we wanted to do with them is to have them collaborate as we are used to it here in the office with creative tools, with, with mythologies. And because of the Corona pandemic, this use case is of course, not just for geographic distributed people, but also for people in Germany. We can't uh, easily go in big groups to the offices. So the collaboration aspect or the virtual collaboration aspect is really quite an important um, aspect in our business at the moment. When we look at the way we collaborate, um, 
for the left side of this slide is actually quite easy, right? If my boss comes to me and says, do one, two, three, I know, okay, I do one, two, three. And even in this uh, home office times, uh, it's it's way more easy to do it actually in the home office because I have the silence, I have the focus there and I can work on my own. But when we want to do this collaborative work, it's, it's really quite complicated. Uh, it's, it's, it's quite um, stressful and it really needs a lot of attention. Um, and this is actually the area we want to investigate more and try to establish or wanted to try to establish a new solution for our engineers. A normal situation at the moment mostly looks like this, and I bet you are familiar with that. So on the half of the screen, you get the Teams, the Zoom or whatever going on, the video sharing. On the right, you may have a to-do board or you have a Slack board or you have something you document. On another one, you may have slides or something you actually are working on. So the space we have is quite limited. Um, if we have one screen, it almost looks like this. If we have two screens, it's a little bit more easy, but there is still this issue that we still have two screens. We're working like we never look people into the eyes. We're always facing maybe um, the, the whiteboard tool or whatever tool we, we use to be creative. And this actually really is quite a problem because it's not efficient. And of course, it doesn't make fun. It's quite stressful to work this for almost like sometimes workshops for half a day like this are not quite fun, as fun as they have been here in the physical world. So actually our idea was quite easy to say, okay, let's take this 2D collaboration going on on the screen there to a 3D area. Let's go into the 3D world and try to use the collaboration as we are used to do it from the offices. We quite quickly came to the solution of the HoloLens. Um, HoloLens, a device from Microsoft, you may all know it, um, quite powerful uh, what is on the market at the moment. Um, it's still quite heavy. It's quite a little bit of plastic still. And I already, uh, I always compare it to like the first phones, right? You know, this big chunky white phones with a big antenna on top. Back then it was high uh, technology, but now it's just, uh, something to smile on. And I bet in some years we will smile on this HoloLens as well as being big, as being chunky, as being not so ergonomic. But this is actually the best technology on the market right now. And it actually works for us quite well because it can actually combine the 2D world with the, two, with the 3D world. And we thought from the device onto the solution and we just came up with ideas. This is actually how we imagined back in 2019 our solution. So we made on the top some little ideas how workshops could look like if we've um, just used the methodology the engineers use at the moment in a 3D place. So we just made in Blender some, some 3D um, you know, mock-ups to see how we actually can do it. And right away, we started with prototyping. Um, we, of course, used uh, Unity uh, with the HoloLens together and just came up with basic ideas how it could look like, how it should look like, and on the picture on the bottom left, you actually can already see the big benefit of the augmented reality glass because I said the project actually started before Corona. So we wanted to um, connect people that are on the one side here in Stuttgart. So maybe three people on place and three people over in, let's say, America. So we have kind of a hybrid flow there. So VR wasn't actually a solution for us we, because we don't want it to... Um, to, to distribute the people on place. We wanted to leave them as they are together in the group and just additionally wanted to connect the people from outside. And as software develops, we just, like I said, build a prototype, we test it around and we want to scale this solution quite quickly. But we actually had to face the truth also quite quickly because software development is an iceberg. And this is kind of a picture that actually I want to explain to you right now, because for us as a big company, we have a lot of guidelines, we have a lot of restrictions, and we want a lot from a software that actually uh, is used within our company. But what most people actually just see is this front end. But if we, if we, if we quantify it, it's around just 30% of the actual solution. And the prototype I just saw, it was actually a work of, of, of weeks and months to do it up and to came up with the first working prototype. 
But the backend stuff, that's actually the quite complicated part of the software to have a proper authentication in place, to have a proper um, encryption in place, to have a proper saving of the states of the room in place. So there are a lot of topics evolving around the backend side. And you may already ask yourself in your head, there are already solutions uh, just about the idea you're talking about. There is spatial, for example, especially for the HoloLens where it started. And also there's Hollow meeting in place. And these two solutions just got interrupted by our Mercedes-Benz guidelines. It wasn't like play and plug and play within our own infrastructure to host spatial and hollow meeting and to use it. Um, it, it was like a journey. We tried it, especially with hollow meeting together. Uh, we tried to actually host a hollow meeting server internally, but it actually wasn't that easy. And if you are familiar with the software, or like with the, with the devices, you know, with, with HoloLens, there are a lot of tricks involved. Like a HoloLens is a, it's a nice device, but it's limited. And a lot of things are actually going on on the back end. You see on the front end. And this, again, is part of this iceberg visual visualization. Like there is a lot going on under the hood to actually get a collaboration working with the HoloLens. And that's why actually we didn't went on with spatial holomating. We just said, okay, let's turn around the iceberg and think from the back end first. So we had our first prototype in place and we knew how actually a basic collaboration would work. We would, we knew how the synchronization works. We knew how the room management basically works. We knew how the avatars should work like. And then we could say, okay, but now let's think from the Daimler guidelines, from all the restrictions, how we can actually enable this within our own infrastructure and also with our, in our own company. And this is actually something I just want to provide to all the startups, to all the solution providers to have this picture in place when they think about their software, about their solution and getting it into a big company, like for example, Mercedes-Benz. It's, it looks so easy. You have a proper um, prototype or like a functioning solution. And then you say, okay, here Mercedes-Benz, use it. Uh, you can just license it for X dollars a month. That's it. Actually, it's not that easy. It's it's much more complicated because the front end, I totally agree. We can use it one-to-one -one within our company, but the back end, there has to be a lot of tweaked. Um, so there has to be a lot of implemented from our perspective, like a proper identification, a proper encryption, a proper storage management, and all the other guidelines connected to the actual software. To actually give you a little more insight into the solution. I brought with me like a basic uh, screenshot through the, sorry, through the HoloLens. And you can actually see um, the solution as it is or has been uh, in place since Q1 2019. This actually is our second phase of uh, our pilot phase. Um, we're actually using um, a lot of functionality we still had in our first prototype. You can see the, the timer in place, uh, the um, post-its basically in place, but also with a lot uh, of new functionality. We work with avatars, just they are known from, from different other solutions like spatial or hollow meeting. And we're using the 3D space to organize workshops and scenarios um, for our development teams. And this is actually a screenshot from a real working scenario where um, our team actually had a retrospective going on within the tool. And um, this is how they use it. They use it like in a on a daily basis or weekly basis within their projects. And they don't see this tool as a tool where they host every meeting. I compare it as the, as the same as, as a Teams meeting or a phone call. For some meetings where you just have to do a little like um, uh, talking, you use the phone to do, um, or you use the tool, the phone tool for this. If you have like um, talking about some slides or some, some informational input, you of course use Teams to share the slides and to, to talk through them. And our use case for the actual 3D meeting is really this creative work, the discussion work. We have a much more natural way of communicating and collaborating in this 3D space. We have a social presence, we have a group presence, and we have this interact interaction going on. And people within this 3D tool really like to collaborate even much longer than they are used to within Teams or other tools. And actually we have quite um, ambitious plans for the end of the year. Um, to go live with like the next stage of the solution. And because we made a lot of investigations 
across pilot phases. Uh, within a um, company space, of course, these cartoonized avatars are not the best way to go. Um, we actually want to go next stage with more realistic avatars. Um, they actually work with the face uh, scanning and you actually um, use an image to actually create the avatars. They are then also full body. Again, um, hand tracking, of course, in place uh, like the Hollands uh, supports it. But also we are investigating regarding face tracking. So we want to use face tracking for the avatars to have a proper visualization of your mimic uh, in the face. Uh, we, are, we are investigating into um, whiteboards, also with haptical feedback to see if actually whiteboard um, scribbling can be as natural as you used to do this in uh, the real world. And we also integrate uh, phone capabilities, but not as you may see, uh, think of now that we actually can join a phone uh, or via a phone. We actually want to use the phone as a tool also to enable um, input like writing post-its or to draw something in the area, but even furthermore to actually use the phone as a whole input device. And this is actually already quite the last slide. And uh, with this slide, I also want to bring you a little bit into like a further thinking because um, we were actually in a post um, corona phase. And what we actually face at the moment is like going back to the offices, but actually not in 100%. The, ver the, the phrase hybrid office is already in everybody mouth, everybody's mouth. And for the collaboration in the hybrid um, workflow, there is some problems, right? If we, you may know it from uh, using teams like in a hybrid um, workflow, two people on location, three people off location, there are already created two, um, two groups of, 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 of collaborators, like the people on location work together, the people off location are work together, but they don't work across the, um, the different locations. And with this tool, we actually can enable to uh, enable people to work together in a virtual world across physical distances. We already tried this out and we actually were surprised how good this works out. If three people are on location wearing a HoloLens, just interacting totally normally, communicating to each other totally normally, getting the impressions like facial impressions one-to-one, -one, and then also three people coming to the meeting from offsite, joining as avatars, having 3D spatial sound and also some gesticulation in place, it almost feels like they are all in the same place. And this is then really a use case for the future for this hybrid workflow. And of course, um, I would be welcome now for some questions uh, regarding my little talk and also for the future, if you are now interested in what we are actually doing or actually want to start an exchange, feel free to just scan this QR code uh, to get exchanged our LinkedIn. Thank you.